Welcome back to the Hot Seat. I am your host, Brock Vieira. We are back from our short hiatus, and we are here to talk about college football, more specifically, the Big Ten. Now, at time of filming, we're approximately 70 to 71 days out from the season, so we have a lot to discuss, and I'm very happy because we're about to bring on a very special guest. We're going to be talking about Michigan Wolverines football. We're going to be talking about who will be the next team to step up in the Big Ten, and we're talking about the future of Big Ten football as we see it. Welcome to the show. He is the host of the One and Done podcast. One, he's the most knowledgeable guy in Michigan that I know. He has tremendous insight into the world of football in general, and we could not be more happy to have him. Please welcome Ryan Dunn. Ryan, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm doing great, man. It feels good to be here. It feels like college football season's, I know it's about, what, three months away, but it feels like it's right around the corner. Yeah, it, it really does. And I'm so grateful because though the XFL and the USFL has, for the most part, you know, calmed my appetite when it comes to football. There's just something about the college game that makes things so feel so special. The rivalry games, those big time moments. And I know you're wearing a very special shirt for our Ohio State fans out there. That is absolutely beautiful, but you guys do have the right to talk. You guys absolutely smoked them at their home this past season. The year before, you guys ran all over them at the big house. You guys will be playing them at the big house this year, but Ohio State will be the talk of later on. We're going to jump into the questions about Michigan first. For everyone watching, in case you guys didn't know how the hot seat works, I ask my guest a question. He will give a response. I will give a rebuttal to that response, and he will give a rebuttal to my rebuttal. Let's just jump right into it. Michigan Wolverines 2022, incredible season. You guys go through the year undefeated, smoke Ohio State at their place to take a second straight big game. Then you guys go, you guys defeat Purdue to win the Big Ten, your first back-to-back conference championship since the early 2000s. Then we all saw the Fiesta Bowl. We're going to jump into the Fiesta Bowl in a second, but do you view last season as a success or as a failure? Before I answer that, first, I want to thank Smack Apparel for this shirt. So if anyone wants to go, they sent this over to me. So very grateful for that. So I look at the season, unfortunately, based on how the season, the regular season finished, the playoffs was a bit of a letdown. Um, when you look at the 2021 season where we beat Ohio State first time in however many years, that and then we made it to the playoffs, it was kind of like, well, it's great to be here. It was just that kind of mentality. But then the next year was, okay, we know what it's like to get to the playoffs. Let's do that again. Let's build upon that. So looking back on it, to say it was a failure, I don't know. I, I It definitely wasn't a success based on what we went through during the regular season. So I guess if like if I'm grading a test, I'm going to give this like a C plus. It's like, yeah, you, gotta, you can improve, but – I guess expectations again was, I mean, you, I was on your guys' show at, back at the end of last year before the Ohio State game. I picked Michigan to lose that game by three points. And that was my mindset back then. But now it's, I guess I would say it was a failure at the end of the day. If I, cause we were the number two seed. I mean, if we would have at least made it to the title game, we probably still would have lost to Georgia. Probably would have been a closer game than what we saw in the title game. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I would look at that season, I guess, as a failure because of we didn't build upon that. Yeah, and you make very valid points, but and maybe this is because of my lack of confidence that I had in Michigan last year. On that same show where you predicted Michigan was going to lose by three, I thought Michigan was going to lose by at least 14, and clearly that wasn't the case. So I viewed last season as a major success for Michigan. And the reason why is because sometimes I think, especially in the world of college football, people perceive the brand bigger than what they see being balled out on the field. And what I mean by that is for a long time, people had these lofty expectations of the Wolverines because they were the Wolverines. Let's not act like the end of Lloyd Carr's time in Michigan was spectacular. It, there was a lot of things that went wrong outside of just the Appalachian State game itself. Then after that, Rich Rod and the spread offense didn't work there. Brady Hoke had that one great season, and then it fell apart. So there was a lot of growing pains that Michigan had to go through in reestablishing themselves as a yearly contender. And I feel that last year was just a step 
in the right direction. And these guys weren't ready to compete on the national stage yet. I believe this season that you are. You I think got- when it comes, oh, sorry. No, continue. No, I think when it comes to that, though, I look at the, the TCU game and it's just, I, I, I've been saying this the whole time Michigan beat Michigan that game. I don't, I personally don't think TCU beat us. We beat ourselves when you look back at that game. Like we, Michigan, something happened that time after the Purdue game and going to the TCU game. Something like the Georgia game the year prior, right? Something happened the past two years where we have that extended time off and all the momentum we have just goes away. So when it comes to TCU game, we threw the pick sixes. We ran the stupidest Philly special I've ever seen in my life. We handed the ball off on fourth, on first and inches from the goal line to a guy who doesn't play running back all the time. We handed it to him. When we did get screwed out of a touchdown by the refs, I'm not going to use that as an excuse, but that was one of the factors that played in the game. And we all of that, and we still lost by six points. So imagine if we didn't have those interceptions. Imagine if we didn't have – if that touchdown counted for us and – did not get screwed in that in that way. So I so yeah, we have improved where if we if those stuff didn't happen, the outcome of that TCU game would have been so much different. But it all did and all kind of like snowballed into like one thing after another. But I and so now my expectations for this season, I know we'll probably touch on that later, that like this, this is the gonna be the best team that Harbaugh's had yet. Like by far. There's over 80% of the roster coming back like a second year JJ McCarthy as your starting quarterback. There's so much coming back for this team to say it's championship or bust. Yeah, I no, I completely would agree with you with that last point. I believe it is championship or bust. And kind of what I was reflecting on as well. And a lot of ways I agree with you. I felt the same way about the Fiesta Bowl. Michigan beat Michigan. And it really came down to the coaching staff, if we're being honest. Yeah, some of the fumbles and the pick six was definitely untimely, but Mickey McCarthy throw an out route was not the right call either. So I think that they're going to clean up some of those things, and they've been to the stage before, so I think they're going to be a lot better. Therefore, I view last season as a success because my expectations for them weren't so lofty. And even if they were, they completely exceeded it. Now, obviously, we are at the point where we would both agree a championship or bust for the Wolverines. Let's go with the hypothetical. If it's bust... And in this scenario, it's not like it goes completely wrong. You guys do the same thing. You guys beat Ohio State, go undefeated in the regular season, win the Big Ten again. However, you lose in the semifinals to whatever team you play. Does your confidence in Jim Harbaugh remain the same, or does it drop in this scenario? Yeah, I don't mean, unfortunately, I would have to see the game, the opponent. Like, you know, in 2021, we got – Dealt the no, the national champs Georgia Bulldogs that were pissed that they lost to Alabama. Um, if it would all have to come down to like who we're playing personally, but if it does, if if we lose the game, then yeah, I still would. I would have to. I wouldn't lose confidence in Harbaugh because you brought the coaches before Brady Hoke and Rich Rod, which I've actually wrote an article a long time ago that Rich Rod was probably onto something because actually every year Rich Rod was there, the team was actually better record wise. And whereas some of the games were competing against Ohio State in those games, but that's not a here nor there. Brady Hoke was just, it just, no, it just wasn't working with Brady Hoke. So we finally, when you look at Harbaugh, we have stability. I will say I am getting a little annoyed with the offseason stuff when it comes to, oh, NFL, like, that's the stuff I want to stop if I'm as a Michigan fan. I want like it's great. Like, oh yeah, he's so good that he's going to like he's getting looked at the NFL. So maybe it helps recruits, but it's like, okay, that's that's fine. But he needs to say, you know what? I'm a Michigan coach. I'm not going to the NFL. I'm not going to interview anywhere. Like, I want to be a Michigan for life. That's it. So he needs to stop entertaining that idea. Um, but when it comes to my confidence in him, if we lose, it would be a, I mean, it would be a complete disappointment it'd be honestly it'd be pretty heartbreaking since the 2016 game when jt barrett was short yeah i said it so like and that was probably before that before this season 2016 i've always kind of held the point that, that was probably one of our best teams that, we, that he's had probably our second best team so when it comes to the like this season if if it's bust in the first round then yeah it would probably be bust period 
Yeah, that's fair. And he was short, by the way. I think that was clear as day. But of course, there's certain powers in play when it came to that game. But regardless of that fact, you know, I got burned. My first tweet that I ever tweeted that I got burned on was that if Georgia failed, this was two years ago, if Georgia failed to win the national championship against Alabama, that they should look to move off of Kirby Smart. Oh, you muted yourself. No. Oh, you good? Okay. So basically, I made that tweet because I felt if Kirby couldn't beat Bama with them losing Jamison Williams and John Mechie, that maybe he wasn't the guy to do it. And guess what? He did do it, and then he won a natty again. So maybe, maybe I was wrong. I know it's a tough thing for me to admit, but maybe that sometimes you just gotta let coaches do their thing. What I do know is that in this scenario, if he loses again, it won't even be remotely as bad as Lincoln Riley losing what four straight or three straight college football semifinals at Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and he wouldn't got a hundred million dollar deal and turned around USC. So I do think that even if this scenario happens again. Any talk about him moving on needs to pump the brakes. But I co- I concur, he also needs to pump the brakes. I think he has done it on any rumors about him leaving because that is how you lose recruits. What do you I think? Agree. I agree. I agree. And I think, um, like I said, the, the NFL stuff does hurt recruiting. I He can say, no, it doesn't. People can say, no, it doesn't. But it does. It does hurt recruiting in the long run. When it comes to, again, moving – like. If we don't win in the playoffs this year, we don't win a game. Like, I'm not one to move off the guy or anything. He's brought us in. Like, we are in national title contention this year, in my opinion. Like, we're not. We weren't. We weren't that way with Rich Rod. We weren't that way for Brady Hoke era. Like, we just weren't. Like, we are that now. And besides the COVID year, hasn't he had? He's had almost every almost every year he's had has been a ten win season. I think one season wasn't a ten win season. Um. And I do love that the fact that I know like Ohio State fans like Josh doesn't hear anything to defend them, but the Ohio State fans on Twitter are like, oh, well, it's because well, he hasn't won a bowl game. So I love the the standard for the Buckeyes is now lower to the bowl games because they care about their bowl games. Like playing against Utah in the Rose Bowl. Like, that's great to play against Utah in the Rose Bowl with a running back at corner. That's great. But so I but the thing for me, and I think we are at that point of it's playoffs or bust like getting to the getting to a bowl game at, for this team where Michigan has that momentum and has going to a bowl game outside the playoffs is useless. Like it's, it's not, I don't care if we go to a bowl game that's outside of playoffs. I'd be like, well, screw it. Like we don't have that expectations anymore. We are past that. We are past like it's play like playoff games. It, that's what matters now. So the Buckeyes are like, oh, well, we won the Rose Bowl against Utah. Why did you play in the Rose Bowl that year against Utah? Oh, I know why. Because you lost to us. So, anyways, but that's, <laughs> yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> no, you, no you, you're absolutely right. And obviously, we're going to bring on Josh Keeley sometime in the future because nothing gives you more joy in this life than stirring the pot. And Michigan, Ohio State is one of the best ways to do it. But the other big kind of team emerging in the Big Ten at the moment is Penn State. Obviously, they just won the Rose Bowl against Utah in very convincing fashion. They have a potentially great quarterback in Drew Aller. They have a very nice running back room coming up. And there's a lot of hype behind the the Nittany Lions. Probably the most hyped team since Joe Paterno was there, in my opinion. I think that's kind kind of levels we're rising to yeah. at that moment. Do you believe that Penn State will be a threat to the Big Ten in the near future? Hmm. Near future, maybe. Not this year, though. Like, I, I don't think – I think this year, I think it's Michigan Ohio State to win the Big Ten. I think – and I've said this before, too. I think 2024 could be a step back for us because I think we had so many guys come back for our team that 2024 we won't they won't have now we do a great job we've done a great job building and recruiting but we had so many seniors come back and like say you know let's play let's go one more time um i think it was like one more year initiative whatever that we put in place um but like this year like michigan goes to penn state i was only concerned for that game if it was a night game because the whiteout effect and everything, it's not. It's at 12 o'clock, so I really don't care. Um, and then they play at Ohio State. 
Like it's gonna. I mean, I, that's at least two losses right there for Penn State. It just is. And then they they got a couple games on their schedule this year too, like like West Virginia. Um, that's could be a solid team. They go up to Michigan State, which is Tuck's never coming. So um, I do think uh, Penn State 2024 could be the year for them, like to really compete for the Big Ten. Because I think Michigan could take a step back, and I think Ohio State will lose some guys as well, like Marvin Harrison Jr. That we know he's not going to come back for 2024. That that guy, if he could go to the draft now, if he could have gone this past draft, excuse me, he would have been the top receiver like selected. Um, but so I think they're going to lose a lot of guys at Ohio State as well. Uh, that's absolutely fair. And what I love about what you just said is in it kind of reminds me of me because you insulted a variety of fan bases in like a one quick slew, and that is fantastic. But we'll get to Michigan State in a little bit. When it comes to Penn State, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to be a championship contending team in 2023. I think they're going to go like 10, 9, nine 10 wins again probably make a New Year's Six Bowl game, and they got something rolling. But the major question mark with Penn State has always been, can the quarterback play at a consistent level? And I think mm-hmm. the only NFL-level quarterback they've had in their history is like Matt McGloin and Todd Collins. And with that being said, I'm not very confident about them heading forward. What I will say, though, is I think they're due for an upset. I think they will beat either Ohio State or Michigan this season. And even though they play at noon, I may I add that Fox's big noon kickoff is the worst thing ever. Man, especially if you don't live on the East Coast. It's not noon. It's 9 a.m. All right. Yeah. That's why I'm getting home. Like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do this. But again, I, it's my grievances for another time. I think that's a trap game for Michigan. We'll see what happens. How do you feel? Um when I look at Michigan's schedule, that could be a trap game. I I still think Michigan goes in and wins that game. I don't think I don't think Penn State can. I eh, yeah, no no. I do think Michigan wins that game. Who am I kidding? Um, like okay, I think actually. So if I look at their schedule for trap games as well, Penn State could be one. Um, I look at Nebraska. You know, uh, Matt Rule's first year, they might be off to a decent start. It's at it's at Nebraska. It's probably going to be a night game. The last time Michigan did play at Nebraska at night, it was a very close game where we, and we I think we only won by three points. So it could potentially, potentially, you know, again, I'm just shooting, I'm shooting for the stars there. Um, but yeah, that could be a trap game. And then they play at Michigan State too, which again, I don't think anything's from Michigan State this year. I don't think Tuck's never coming or anything, you know, whatever. Um, so, but imagine, oh my God, Michigan's already a 19 point favorite in that game. Woo, that's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, that's my view right now. That's very fair. So we're going to talk about the rest of the big 10 opponents in a little bit. I want to finish off with my last question when it comes to the Wolverines. Now, this kind of issue has occurred far beyond Jim Harbaugh, and that is the quarterback position. Obviously, Denai Robinson was incredible, but they never really could get it done outside the Sugar Bowl. Devin Gardner was potentially incredible, but mm-hmm. it never really came together. Joe yeah. Milton was potentially incredible, never really came together. You yeah. we look back at the uh, Jake Rudock. 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 That was yeah. just yeah. That was just right in the toilet. <laughs> Uh, it was not really his fault. It's a, a whole issue. But Michigan hasn't had a solid quarterback in a long time, except for now. Seems like this year, JJ is the guy. However, until last season, everyone was still on the K train, and we saw how that went. Do you believe that JJ McCarthy will have a, an even better year than he had last year, or will he regress? No, I think he'll have a better year. Um, and all those guys you named, um, yeah, some of those guys just never – like Devin Gardner, for example, he was just behind a, a horrible offensive line situation. I swear that guy would probably get hit like 40 times a game. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to quarterbacks, this is – he is the best quarterback that – like Jim Harbaugh is the best uh, – sorry, J.J. is the best quarterback that Jim Harbaugh has ever had at Michigan. So I do think that 
the, when I look at McCarthy going to this year, last season was a battle, right? It's him and Cade McNamara. And I was on the JJ train before that. I was thinking that, listen, JJ was more talented. He had a higher, like, he had more to bring compared to Cade. Cade was, Cade was fantastic. I will always thank Cade for what he did in the 2021 season, being our quarterback, being the guy when we turned everything around in the program. I'll always be grateful for what Cade was for us. So, but it comes to JJ though, this is his first full off season as the guy. There is no battle. There is no, is it kid? Is it, it, it's, you're the dude. You offense is going to be built around you where everything is. You're getting all the first team reps. There's no one that's going to be taking the first team reps besides you. You are the guy. So I don't think he's going to regress. I think he is going to improve. I do think that, and I've talked to Michigan people about this too. And I get, they keep going back and forth with me on this. So People they want to see us open the playbook and throw the ball more. That's what the, that's what it is. And they we want to throw the ball more. We want to throw the ball more. And like I get it. Like I want the Michigan offense to throw the ball more too. But I think you and I both know what's this like. What's a safer play? A run play or a pass play? Yeah, obviously the run. Run. So when you're a, a team that can run the ball like Michigan can, you're going to control the game. You're going to control. You're if you can get a first down, hand the ball off every single time or almost every single time, why would you not do that all game? So it's, and I, so I get the like back and forth, like what well, we want to throw the ball. But it's like, yeah, but running is more effective based on like success, you know, but I, so do I think he'll, he'll be better than last year? Yes, because I do think they will still try to throw the ball more, but for those that are trying to make Michigan throw the ball more, like understand we are very good at running the ball. It's just a safer play. And we, do a great job with it. Absolutely. But kind of a follow-up question to that is one of the reasons why you guys were so effective in the football, you guys had the best offensive line in, foot, in football. You guys did lose a bunch of guys off that offensive line to graduation, the draft, etc. Are you as confident in this year's offensive line, or how do you feel about them? Oh, yeah. I'm actually more confident this year than last year. I think – um we brought we got a couple transfers in. I think we got three transfers in actually. Three transfers, two, three returning starters on the offensive line. I'm trying to remember this. Yeah, like three returning starters, three transfers all coming like c- coming in. So we got veteran presence on the offensive line. Sharon Moore, the offensive coordinator, his first year as a sole offensive coordinator for Michigan. Probably the best offensive line coach in the country. Actually, probably he has to be. He's won the best offensive line of war in the past two seasons. Like, so he's got to be the best offensive line coach in the country. So I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about losing linemen. I think we just, and we are, if you look at our, like a recruiting class too, we're bringing in offensive linemen. Like we are just crushing it in offensive linemen recruits. So I look at it as now just rinse, lather, repeat, or was that what it is? I don't know what lather, rinse, repeat. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how I take it. I don't, I don't know how to take a shower. You know, apparently I forgot how to do that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> when it comes to the offensive line, though, I, as long as Sharon Moore is there and we keep recruiting and building these guys up, I'll never have any worries about it. Excellent. Well, we're going to go to commercial. When we come right back, we're going to go to my favorite segments. Let's talk about other teams and really be able to talk your stuff. We'll be talking Michigan State, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois. And we're talking about everybody. And then we're going to be talking about USC, UCLA. And after that, we're going to look at the predictions for the Big Ten in the future of the expanded college football playoffs. We'll be right back. This commercial is brought to you by True Brain. Say hello to True Brain. We're not magicians. We're not going to turn you into a rocket scientist, unless you're already a rocket scientist. We're not Big Pharma, and our products are custom made to boost mental output. We empower people to do their best thing. Welcome back to the hot seat. I am here with our guest, Ryan Dunn, with One and Dunn Radio. He is, of course, our most knowledgeable Michigan Wolverines fan with the beautiful shirt that you can get. Where at? <laughs> One more time, Ryan. Uh, it is swag. Oh my gosh. Whoop. Uh, God. Smack apparel. I don't know why I said swag apparel. Smack apparel. Smack apparel. And obviously, <laughs> with that shirt, he is talking his stuff. He did make some very interesting comments about Michigan State earlier. Let's talk about the rest of the Big Ten. We're talking Michigan State, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, who just got both Cade McNamara and Eric All. Maryland is on the rise with Mike Loxley. 
Nebraska's on the rise in that rule. Do you see any of those other teams, some of those teams who got new head coaches, like Wisconsin with Luke Fickle, some of those teams that have been burgeoning for a while, with like Maryland, some of those teams who were notorious powerhouses in the past, Illinois and obviously Nebraska. And do any of those teams come up and challenge Michigan and Ohio State for that top dog position within the next five years? Ooh, next five years. Um, I would have to say Nebraska. I think Matt Rule, I think, is a very good coach when it comes to college. He's just he's just good at building. Like he it wasn't meant for the NFL. You know, it's he's just not that guy. Some co- some college coaches are just not meant for the NFL. We've seen it multiple times. It just doesn't work out. So I think his thing is college. He can really connect with kids. Nebraska, yes, in the past has been known to be a big powerhouse in college football they're just they have not been that way for quite a while i think he's going to come in do a great job in nebraska i do like luke fickle as well for wisconsin i think he was a great hire i think he's just i think he's i don't think he's the perfect hire for wisconsin but he was right up there he was a like a very surefire guy that you really don't get around too often to have be your head coach there so i do like him for wisconsin i think those two guys for their programs, I think it's going to bring them back. The thing with Wisconsin was we always knew Wisconsin, at least in the Big Ten, as a very like defensive-minded team that can run the ball with like just tough, gritty offensive linemen. And but that was it. That's all you knew about them. They were not that successful throwing the ball. They were like throwing the ball was never their strong point. It's kind of like Iowa. Iowa was not that strong throwing the ball with this year. They couldn't throw a pass. Five six yards it seemed like when it comes to the passing game this year, but they're doing their own for defense and known for trying to run the ball. Um, but I do think Wisconsin and Nebraska are two teams that in the next five years could really, because now the Big Ten will no longer be conferences; it will just be top two teams. So those would be two teams that I don't know if they'll be against Michigan and Ohio State, but they will be. Hey, we gotta watch out for Nebraska because they're a pretty good team. Hey, we gotta watch out for Wisconsin because. Those could be two good teams next five years. So, and this is excluding USC and UCLA. I am higher on Wisconsin than I am than Nebraska. And I also don't think that Luke Fickle was satisfied with the Wisconsin hire. So I do believe that if he does have a successful season and gets a better job offer, he will leave Wisconsin. And the issue that I have with Wisconsin is that yes, you are right. They're gonna they were notorious to be defensive minded and a running rushing attack team. Now, obviously, Fickle's gonna open up the playbook a little bit, they're gonna throw the ball a little more. Maybe they'll have an NFL caliber wide receiver for, for once in their lives. We'll see. <laughs> Doubt it, just like they won't ever have an NFL caliber quarterback that is able to come in as a freshman, they'll all have to be transfers. But beyond that, Wisconsin in my life which has meant that Wisconsin outside of Barry Alvarez has never won a big game in my life, except for maybe that one year they beat Michigan State and Kirk Cousins in the Big Ten Championship game. They have lost every Rose Bowl I've seen them play in. They have lost virtually every Big Ten Championship game I've seen them play in, except for obviously that one year. They have never been a team that you look at and go, that team could beat a 10-win team. You put that team against like an Arizona State team in the Las Vegas Bowl where you can win like 16-14, yeah, they'll do that. But I don't ever foresee them going into the big house and winning consistently. I don't see them going into the horseshoe and them winning consistently. I don't even see them going inside Happy Valley and having them win consistently. I just don't think that they'll ever be able to acquire – the amount of talent that it's going to take for them to get over that hump. Same thing for Nebraska, but even worse, because I don't even think they can get to the hump. I think that Matt Rule will get a 10-win season in there. Maybe he'll get a couple nine-win seasons. But the issue for Nebraska is in their heyday, they were national recruiters. They were going down to Hawaii. They are paying offensive linemen. They were going up to like New Jersey, and they were getting Mike Rozier. They were getting guys from everywhere. In the new landscape of NIL and everything, who wants to go to Nebraska, honestly? Yeah. So that, that means that Matt Rule is going to have to do more with less, which he has done before at Baylor. But you also look at what happened at Baylor. 
He never won a Big 12 championship game. Then the team sucked in 2020. Then Aranda won the Big 12 the next year. You look at his time in the NFL, you see that he has a loyalty to his guys to the detriment of the team. That's why Robbie Anderson got an extended contract. That's why Keith Kirk- Kirkwood got a role on the team. That's why P.J. Walker got a role on the team because they were, those were his guys from Temple. I think that those kind of factors could be a little bit too loyal. Nebraska not be able to be a national recruiter. And again, having those big dogs already established, I don't see either of those teams being contenders anytime soon. And for being frank, the only time I saw any team outside of the top two even remotely being in a contentious position was Mel Tucker's first year or second year, the year they won the Peach Bowl at Michigan State. Last year, I thought they brought in some very interesting transfers, and wow, did they shit the bucket, for lack of a better phrase. And when you look at Michigan State now, after seeing some of the guys that they lost, I'm not very confident that they're going to be able to get back together. So when it comes to all those teams, I don't feel like any of them are going to be a threat within the next five years. What do you think? No, yeah, I think uh, I think we can just actually more accurately say that that Kenneth Walker won the Peach Bowl and won like was the reason why Michigan State was even good that year because once he left, they were they've been garbage. Like the past year, recruiting is not going well for Michigan State. They lost their top receiver just transferred. I think he's at Florida State now. So, and he was my only, like, like when we played Michigan State this past year at Michigan, he was the only guy I was like, if we don't cover him, this could be a problem. And he scored the touchdown against us, but that's all he did. So, um, yeah, I, when I look at the Big Ten, I mean, the rest of the teams, there's not much. I think Purdue's, when they lost, uh, was it Brom is the coach? Yep. Uh, I, I didn't, I, I liked him there. I think he always, whenever they play like a big time opponent, they're going to give you a lot of trick stuff, a lot of stuff that you're not prepared for. And they're going to give you a good effort. Like when we played him in the Big Ten title game, yeah, we won by a decent margin, but they play us pretty close for the most part. Um, and I can't tell if it was just us going a little easy on them or trying to re- like rest up a little bit for the playoffs. I don't know, but we they played us a little tough. So I look at those teams. Yeah, there's not there's not a whole lot of teams that I'd say next five years would really be competing for the Big Ten. At least those teams that we're talking about. I know UC, USC and UCLA coming over is a factor that will be competing. But when it comes to those other teams, like again Minnesota, I don't see competing for the Big Ten. I don't see Illinois competing for the Big Ten. Um, I don't see Rutgers, obviously not Rutgers. <laughs> uh, Indiana, like Maryland, those are teams that will not see competing in the Big Ten. They will be solid teams. They're going to be de- pretty decent teams that have on the resume when you beat them. But as far as, oh, are they going to be a Big Ten contender? contender? No, they're not. Yeah, that's fair. And to just say these two points before we move on, I think if Mike Loxley moves into a bigger team within the Big Ten, I think that could potentially be a threat because of what he's already done at Maryland. But that's a big if. And then also, I do like Purdue. They brought in Ryan Walters, former Illinois DC, yeah. who just helped send De- Devon Witherspoon, Sidney Brown, and Jatavius Martin to the NFL. So I think that he has something potentially happening at Purdue. They also have Graham Harrell as their offense coordinator. So my belief in them got sunk a little bit because I don't believe in Graham Harrell at, at all. But this is not time for my infamous Graham Harrell sucks as a coach rent. Um, so, but I do believe Purdue could have something happening. We'll see what happens in the future. Moving on to the two teams we did mention, USC, UCLA, they joined the Big Ten. That means that they're going to have to play in the cold repeatedly. But in the same breath, a lot of teams are going to have to venture out west to play them. How do you feel about them becoming a member of the Big Ten? And do they pose a threat to the Michigan and Ohio State when they come over? No. Um, <laughs> is that now, you know what? Okay. I will say between the two teams, I would think USC would be more of a threat. I think besides losing to Utah this year, if they didn't, if like, let's just face it, if Ohio state had beaten Utah in the PAC 12 game, they were going to get to the playoffs. Or did I say, did I say Ohio state? That's, I meant USC. Yeah. If USC had beaten yeah. Utah in the PAC 12 game, they would have been to the playoffs, but because it lost, that's how Ohio state got in. So and I think Lincoln Riley, the thing with Lincoln Riley is that he's, he's going to put up points, but he sometimes will not stop you from scoring. Like the defenses historically have never been that good. Whenever Lincoln Riley is the coach is because his offense has always put up a lot of points. So he doesn't really focus a whole lot of time in defense. 
Um, so if I had to pick a team between those two, that'd be more of a threat. I would pick USC just based on history with Lincoln Riley. Um, but I'm not, when they come play us in the winter, that's more of a factor than us going to there. Like when it's like, if it's like October, November, we're flying over to USC, or UCLA. Great. It's nice weather. It's not snowing or anything, but they're coming over to us. Wow. It's cold. It's snowing. <laughs> like it sucks. So it's, uh, it's going to, it is, that's going to play a factor for them. Like, I don't think the travel is going to play a factor for our guys. Like now there might be, if I had to pick one thing that might play a factor when we travel, there is the time change because let's just say that USC, like Michigan plays USC at like a, you know, seven o'clock time, right? Seven o'clock time there for the, for Michigan is 10 o'clock. So a couple hours, three hours into the game, their bodies are feeling like it's one o'clock in the morning, you know? So that, that could be one issue I could see traveling over there, but I, I, I don't think it's that big of a factor compared to what they're going to be experiencing when they come over to the cold schools. That That's a, very fair point, and I agree that they will struggle when they have to play in winter time and have to play a much more physical brand of football compared to the one that's already being played. And I agree with you on Lincoln Riley. The issue at Lincoln is that he's so great at so many factors that he doesn't really have time or energy to devote into the defense, which means that he needs to rely on a strong defensive coordinator to kind of hanker that sector down. But he's too loyal to Alex Grinch to understand that Grinch is the reason why he's lost a variety of big games. Um, but that is the point on USC. Mm -hmm. The problem that I fear when it comes to Michigan and Ohio State is that when you look at their records playing on the West Coast in the history of the Rose Bowl, it ain't exactly great. And if you have to play there consistently every single year, you might improve because you're always going, or the old West Coast Blues might come back. I mean, for as much of a great coach Bo Beckler was, Matt could never win in California. I think he's, what, two and seven in Rose Bowls, three and seven, something, some record like that. And that trend has kind of continued. Outside of this past season, Penn State didn't win a Rose Bowl since 95. Outside of Ohio State's victory against Utah, which Utah completely outplayed them, except for the heroics of Marvin Harrison Jr., Ohio State's not really that great on the West Coast. And for Michigan, if you look at them when they play in warmer climates, there is a drop-off in performance. We've seen it in the two bowl games. We've seen it, you know, in the history of the Rose Bowl. We've seen it before. And those are some of the fears that I have. Now, do I think that Michigan, they think it suck? No. But what I do think is with this extra factor, I do think that Ohio State, Michigan, USC, and UCLA are all going to average at least – one to two losses per season, it's going to take a monumental effort to go undefeated. I think that could harm the position of these teams to compete in the college football playoffs, one, in qualifying, and two, just being able to be healthy and ready to roll. That's kind of my big fear when it comes to this expansion. How do you feel? Well, one or two loss. well, one loss won't put, will knock you out, you know, if you're losing to these teams. And Sometimes the t sometimes two losses will knock you out. You know, it could be that we have those we have the loss, and if we lose to Ohio State, for example, that we could still make the playoffs easily. Um, and same with the two losses. If we lose to like Ohio State and like a USC, and if those teams are top ten, top fifteen teams, well, maybe Michigan did lose to just two teams in the top ten or top fifteen. That's it. So I, I'll. It all kind of depends on like sometimes of the playoffs. Again, this past season we saw Ohio State get in, even though they didn't play a conference game and they got steamrolled at home by Michigan. But then it kind of came to, well, who else do we put in? I mean, we just we had an Alabama that's two losses. We have USC that has two losses. Like, who else do we put in? Like that's it. so sometimes that scenario might happen. Like Ohio State fans can say all they want, but you guys got in based on the fact that it was like, well, we got no one else to put in here. Like we gotta, we gotta put somebody in here that, so we don't look dumb as a committee. So I, you know, it just, it all kind of goes on to scenarios as to like, is there definitive teams that like, you know, Hey, these teams for sure 
deserve to make it? Or is there going to be factors where, like we saw this past season, like, well, we don't really know who else we can put in, so let's just let's put in Michigan. Let's put in USA. They lost twice, but you know what? They're, we know they're at least a top 12 team. Let's put them in. So this issue is not going to arise in the expanded playoffs, but hypothetically in a four-team playoff, there's clearly conference bias and brand bias as well when it comes to it. My issue is that Ohio State only lost one game last year. And they if Tennessee only lost one game, Tennessee would have been in over Ohio State. If mm-hmm. Alabama only lost one game, Alabama would have been in over Ohio State. Right. If Notre Dame went undefeated, they would have probably been in over Ohio State. Even mm-hmm. I mean, even in this hypothetical situation, had they never played each other at the beginning of the season, they still probably would have jumped Ohio State. It's yep. I just fear that. In the future, if you have multiple SEC teams that have one loss and an SEC chat that's undefeated, they're going to put in multiple SEC teams compared to putting in a non-conference champion Big Ten team that you know, has a loss. Like that, That's just my kind of – like the only way I can see a non-conference champion Big Ten team making it is if there's like a TCU scenario – where they run the table in the regular season but stumble in the championship game. And that's going to be a big kind of factor for them going forward is I don't think that when you put them against head-to-head resumes, I think the bigger brands will win out, even though we're talking about some of the biggest brands in football because of conference biases. That's how I kind of feel about that. What do you think? So you're saying that you think if if Michigan was a one-loss non-Big Ten winner, Right, they would not get in, is what you're saying. Like, let's say the one loss is to Ohio State, but if, but if you have Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama, one of those is a conference championship. The other two have one losses. You're saying that all three of them are making it compared to just Big Ten only sending one team in. I do actually. Mm. I, I I truly. So the issue with this is that the committee is run by humans, right? If it if it was the whole BCS system with the computers, it'd be a different scenario. But mm-hmm. they're ran by people, and those people have a tremendous love for the SEC to the point where I think that they could turn a blind eye to Michigan in this scenario or any other Big Ten team. And I think, um, gosh, I th- I think that you have to. I mean, it's obviously it's a body of work, so you have to look at everyone's schedules. Like, let's just say Tennessee. Let's, I'm just throwing them out there as a team. If the SEC team. They run through this. They go through the whole schedule. Their one loss is to I don't know Kentucky, but they didn't beat anybody else worth. Like I know sometimes the schedule like Florida's on their schedule. Sometimes Georgia is. Sometimes they're not. I don't know. Some, I don't know how the schedule works sometimes. But let's just say they go through a, a somewhat weak SEC schedule. They had lose to Kentucky, but Michigan's only loss is to an Ohio State. Does that really des- like? Does they really deserve to be knocked out in Tennessee, who didn't, who probably wouldn't play in the conference game either, losing to Kentucky again? I don't know. It's a whole scenario thing that we're talking about. Yeah. I don't do. Do they deserve to get in over one loss Michigan who loses to a potentially like top five team in Ohio State? I I wouldn't think they would deserve that based on if we're going by oh SEC bias. And I get what you're saying. The committee is definitely SEC bias, and it's it's super easy to see that. But if we're trying to be realistic, Michigan in that scenario would not deserve to be knocked out compared to a Tennessee. Like if you're picking between one or the other, I don't see how you put a Tennessee team in who loses to Kentucky, who I would don't imagine Kentucky to be like really good. I think mean, they could be an average, probably seven, maybe eight win team. I don't know. But compared to a Michigan team who only lost it to Ohio State, and Ohio State being a really good team, I don't see how you knock them out compared to Tennessee. I agree with you. Unfortunately, deserving at what occurs is not exactly what always happens. Ask Penn State fans from a couple years ago, and they will spend they will take up your entire day talking about how they got screwed when it came to the college football playoffs. But fortunately for us, the four-team playoff will be a thing of the past. The college football playoffs will expand, and the Big Ten will be a very happy conference because of it. Because it's more than likely they will average at least two teams a year yeah. in the playoffs. 
How do you mm-hmm. feel about the expanded football playoffs? And what are your thoughts about Michigan's national championship potential being that they'll have more chances to make it? Well, the expanded playoffs d- will hurt the game. The game will no longer, and that's the, what we call Michigan Ohio State, the game will no longer be as relevant. And it might turn into a multiple time matchup where okay great michigan ohio state plays the last game of the season well they're both eligible to go to the big 10 championship so they might play again and let's just say michigan wins the first time and then the big 10 ohio state wins the next game they both get to the playoffs they might potentially face each other a third time like that potential could happen so i and i so i do think when it comes to and i know we talked about this last time i was we talked um when it comes to the playoff scenarios, if you're going to, if every team, if every conference is sending two teams to the playoffs, I'm fine with that. I would like to see a group of five team get in as well. A team that's 11 and one or they went undefeated. If, if I say, if we're holding every power five conference to two teams getting in, you got to leave, leave a spot for your group of five team. Just the best one out there. I'm not saying put in three two group of five teams, you know, you can like, we don't need to do that. But if you got like a, uh, what was it? Tulsa last year. Um, who was what they, I think they lost one game. I don't remember how many games they lost last year, but Tulsa was a team. They beat USC in their bowl game. Oh, too late. Huh? Oh, two lane. lane. Sorry. Two lane. I I got a tool going. Um, two lane. They beat USC in their bowl game. That is kind of a scenario. It's like, well, they could have at least competed in the playoffs. You know, I think with a 12 team expansion. So find a group of five team that can go that deserves it because there are some group of five teams that deserve it. But I don't want to see where we're just like we're sending in three and shoot with this committee. They might send in four SEC teams or three Big Tens. Like I, we don't need to see that. No, to the point of does it help Michigan's chances for match? for national contenders yeah of course i mean there's more chances for you to get to the playoffs there's more spots available for you to get there but sometimes it's like dude do we, do we really deserve it like i mean yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't turn down a playoff spot i'd be happy for a playoff spot but it's just like there's sometimes there are teams that deserve it more than others like we've seen we have seen that in the past and the committee has shown to screw over teams that do deserve a playoff spot um but yeah, I think when it comes to Michigan, I mean, more spots is better, more opportunities are better. So we'll see. Absolutely. So we're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up our Big Ten preview at Michigan football with the host of One and Done Radio, Ryan Dunn. <laughs> Yes, and that is the brand that sponsors this show, Team NBS Media, where you can get all your entertainment, sports, and just life needs. It has a bunch of great articles on there, great shows, great shorts, a whole bunch of great content for you guys. Ryan, you also have your own show, as you mentioned, One and Done Radio. Where can everyone find you? Yeah, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts. Uh, Apple Podcast, <laughs> wherever you get your podcast, the show's there. Um, I've been actually I'm wrapping up a minor league baseball tour that I was doing. I was interviewing a bunch of different minor league baseball teams. Um, so I kind of wrapped up that. So check that out on YouTube. I got a lot of interviews that just got completed there. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, all those places that you can find it. Absolutely. I for everyone that enjoys Ryan, he will be back uh, on with us soon. Because college football forecast is back. Me and Bill Carroll go through college football. We talk about the transfer portal. We talk about conferences. We talk about life and love of the game every single time. It's always an exhilarating conversation. Ryan can attest to that because that is where I am my most um, deep into my anger. is definitely in that show. And it comes out in ways that just occur without really uh, any expectations of uh, calmness or, you know, be civil, or just, uh, you never see it coming. It just kind of occurs for, you know, some unknown reason that I probably should seek therapy for. 
because college football is such a great sport, we're going to finish it off with some last questions for Ryan. We talked about the Big Ten and obviously how everything's going to shape up in terms of how Michigan's going to perform, how they're going to perform with the new conference expansion, how they're going to perform in the expanded college football playoff environment in general. One of the big things I've mentioned is that Michigan has shown that they've had struggle winning in warm weather climates. Do you think that because of this, you guys will be able to get some type of compensation or do you think they'll move a game up north or something or institute uh, indoor? I don't know. Do something to help you guys out. Or do you guys think that you guys are just going to have to get over the warm weather climates if you guys want to play consistently for the national championship? Yeah, we're just going to get over it. I think at the end of the day, I mean, everyone's got their own home field advantage. Everyone's got their own environment. Like SEC has their humidity down south. Up north, Michigan, like Michigan, Ohio State, the northern teams have the cold, uh, the snow. Like, we're just you're gonna have to get it. So, it's all about adapting and evolving. That's it. Like, you have to adapt and evolve if you want to be successful in college football. You know, like NIL, for example, is a huge thing. Like, you you touched on that earlier with Nebraska, for example. Like, if you want to be successful in college football, NIL is now the biggest thing you need to bring in the big recruits to be successful, especially with transfers too. the transfer portal is absolutely bonkers when it opens up. Like it's absolutely insane. I'm like, who is going where I thought the portal was closed. When does it open? Is this the, is this the multiverse? Is this Dr. Strange around? Like what is this portal crap? So it's so much, but you have to adapt and evolve. So when it comes to the weather, it's just something that Michigan's just going to have to adapt and evolve to. Absolutely. And one thing that they've had to adapt and evolve to is the constant changes on their coaching staff. Michigan has become kind of a plucking ground for assistant coaches. Do you feel that's going to impact your program negatively, or do you guys feel like you guys are at a place internally where it doesn't really matter? You guys will be okay. Well, I will say Harbaugh did a great job. I think after the COVID season, I had said in my show, we had a we had defensive coordinator, Don Brown, before. And Don Brown, all he knows is man coverage blitzing. Like, he doesn't know anything about zone defense. So it worked great in the beginning, but then it just started to die. Like, it was started to be exposed and everything. So when it comes to his coaching philosophy, he has changes. So my thing, I was saying, listen, if I was the AD for Michigan at that time, I said, Harbaugh, either you fire Don Brown or you go out the door with him. Like, if you're not going to adapt and change and figure out your coaching staff, go out the door with it. And I said that, and I'll stand by that. But he got rid of Don Brown. He brought in a younger coaching carousel, younger coaches, more that can bring a more, like, broader spectrum for him to look at for our lens. So I think um, – so coaches, like, getting plucked and taken, I think it's a great thing. I think it's something that as long as you're keeping your coordinators, like, if you're keeping Sharon more, if you're keeping uh, – God, what I'm forgetting his name. Jesse Minter, our defensive coordinator. Like, if you're keeping your guys and they're confident about the cor- the position coaches they're bringing in to help out, you know, I think it's a great thing at the end of the day. Okay. And last question for you before we wrap up. One of the things that Michigan was criticized for last year was the lack of strength in the non conference schedule. But that's a trend across college football is that the top teams are going to play a weak uh, non conference schedule. When the times of the expanded playoffs come through and when it's time to negotiate contracts for non-conference games here on out, do you think Michigan, knowing that they have some games that they can throw away, will try and go out and make some big-time matchups or go to neutral sites to make a little bit more money? Or will they stick with their philosophy of scheduling some soft non-conference opponents? Well, 2024, we play Texas. And I believe that that is actually at the big house, if I could, I could be wrong. So um, again, we, a, another soft game for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, but you know, but it's a it's a big it's a massive brand in college football. The brand is huge. So, um, you know, when people have talked about the the week conference schedule or non conference schedule, it's like, well, like it wasn't like it was made yesterday. It was made years prior. It wasn't like it was made the day before. Like, oh, you know, we want to play UConn, who was a playoff team or not not playoff team, bowl team. Excuse me. Um. But when it comes to like, at the end of the day, if you, like non-conference or not, like it's, I'm not like, like sometimes non-conference can hurt you. Like we saw Georgia absolutely smack Oregon in the face, like absolutely smack them. If Oregon did not play Georgia that week one, 
And they're only, I think they only lost to Washington last year, correct? Oregon State yeah. as well. Oh, they did lose to Oregon State. Okay. So I'll take that back because I thought they only lost to Washington. I forgot about the Oregon State game. But if they had only lost to Washington last year, they beat Oregon State and they didn't even play Georgia to play, I don't know, somebody else, they would have been in the playoffs probably. Who knows? <laughs> they could have probably made it in with a one loss. So uh, it's kind of like your conference, non conference games. Are, yeah, they're cool. They're great matchups. It's great to see for TV and all that. But it's like, it could hurt you. It could hurt you in the end if you set yourself up for failure early in the season. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you so much for being with us. I do want to let everyone know that you don't only cover the Michigan Wolverines. Of course, you cover a variety of things. And one of those things is the Indianapolis Colts. Now, obviously, the Colts hold a special place in my heart as a Chargers fan because we got to beat you guys the day after Christmas and, you know, make the playoffs. Uh, we have some, had some great playoff battles in previous history, but the Colts are on the rise. You guys did just draft Anthony Richardson out of Florida. Florida quarterback. They can get a little testy at times, but how do you feel about the Colts' future now with your quarterback being Anthony Richardson and your head coach being former Chargers offensive coordinator Shane Steichen? You could have just kept out like all the Charger crap, and I would have been very happy with the question you just gave me. But now I have to relive all that. So anyways... (laughs) <laughs> so I'm 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 good I'm good with Anthony Richardson. I actually going up to the draft. I was either I think it was on I was on the show before with, with Bill, and it was a live show, but between like him and Will Levis at the time, but who was going to be picked? And I was like, I didn't want Will Levis. I I see the upside with Richardson. I do like the coaching staff. You know, with, with Steichen coming in play, I think he's going to do a great job. My thing that I'll always say is do not rush the kid. We There's examples, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts. These are guys that did not play week one. Not in, like Mahomes didn't make his first start to the last game of the season, like of his rookie year. So, and those guys were not projects. Like they are projects, but not the project compared to what Anthony Richardson is. So I one I don't want him to start week one. I've already said a multiple spaces and stuff that Gardner Minshew will be the week one starter. He will throw for seven hundred yards and eight touchdowns against the Jaguars in his week one revenge game. I'm already calling it. When it comes to Anthony Richardson, I like the pick. I like the size, the speed, the athleticism, everything that he brings. He does. I understand people want to talk about his completion percentage in college, the lack of gameplay in college. I get that. But the tools are there. Everything that he has is there. Shane Steichen, I think, will do a great job with him. He'll build the offense around him. He won't play in week one as far as a starter. He'll probably make a package and, you know, give him – I think I think the best thing he can do, give him a package, like a little option package or whatever it might be. Something that you can get him to start to get a feel for the game and not just, like, throw him into the fire against the Jaguars in week one. Give him some time to develop. Absolutely. And for anyone that wants to get more info on the Indianapolis Colts, once again, Ryan, that is your man, host of One and Done Radio. Thank you so much for being here. Where can everyone find you? Again, find me on Twitter at One Done Radio. It's spelled D-U-N-N-E Radio. Um, I it was a nickname. Well, it was it was a nickname I was given to in college, not college, pfft, high school. Uh, but I, I played receiver, and the guy was like played defense. They would call me like One and Done. Then I beat him for a touchdown. Like well, that was fun, um, but yeah. So <laughs> find me on Twitter at One Done Radio again. YouTube, Spotify, anything. Reach out to me, please. I love interacting with people. Unless you're gonna be like those, if you're gonna be like an idiot, or if you're gonna be um, a troll, like don't. <laughs> like just, I don't know. Like don't waste your life. I don't know what to tell you. Like some, there are some people. I'm like, I don't know why you're talking right now. But yeah, <laughs> find me on there. Uh, absolutely. Once again, that's where you can find us. You can find me at MNS today on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me. I follow back for Ryan Dunn. Thank you guys so much for being here. Go Wolverines this year. And I can't wait to see what happens. Exactly. Look at that beautiful shirt that you can get for yourself. Once again, where can you get that, Mr. Ryan Dunn? Smack apparel. Smack apparel. When you want to talk your smack. And of course, we will be talking smack with Ryan Dunn in the future on Clash Football Forecast. So let me let me say one last thing. Sorry about smack apparel. They actually have lots of teams. It's not just Michigan. So if you're a fan of other teams, they got plenty of teams. So, but 
I think they have more Michigan stuff, I will say, but there are lots of other teams out there too. So if you're a fan of any other teams, check them out. Yeah, so even if you are a current salty Ohio State Buckeye, you can go get your own T-shirt. That sure says something that, I don't know, I, we don't want to get in that rabbit hole before we're here for another hour. We'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one.